Thank you for joining us. My name is Jay Clifford. I am a developer advocate for Influx Data. I'm here with Evan Kaplan, our CEO. Thank you for joining us, Evan. Yeah, thanks for having me. So I have so many burning questions for you. <laughs> um, loads come to mind, but what I wanted to really start with is, is our roots, and that's uh, that's time series data. I feel it's a word that gets sort of thrown around a lot, but can you sort of break down what time series data is and, and why do people need to care about time series data? Fundamentally, um, time series is is what sensors actually speak. So it's the lingua franca of sensors. So if you say, you know, we have the sensorification of the world is happening at an incredibly fast rate, whether it's the watch I'm wearing now, a continuous glucose monitor, my car, a smart city, industrial uh, satellites in orbit, right? The sensors are everywhere. And we're instrumenting the physical world at an incredible rate. You marry that together with what is pervasive networking, everything from you know 4G, 5G cellular to Wi-Fi, but now to Starlink, um, to Project Kuiper, to um, Utelisat, to all the satellite-oriented stuff. And we're really covered with network connectivity. And so if you take this sensorification and you take this cover of network connectivity, you have a foundational layer a really foundational global layer of IoT. And so because sensors speak time series, that's the language they speak. So if you think about it, a sensor is whether it's light, heat, um, optics, um, temperatures, wh whatever you have, a sensor is measuring over time. That becomes a foundation for instrumentation. And instrumentation is, is, is the foundation for smarter systems. And so that's what pulled me into this whole thing was thinking that it was what is IoT was so strong and would be strong, you know, on a long cycle, not not a three year, in, you know, not a, not a three year hype cycle, but a 30, 40 year cycle of in continuing pervasive connectivity, continuing sensification. I thought time series would be the great foundation. And so meeting Paul, I got that sort of background. I love that. That's really cool. And so, so say if I was new to uh, Influx Data and, and Influx DB in general, so what role does Influx DB play in the in the time series ecosystem? Could you answer that? You know, that bedrock question for everyone. For sure. So first of all, the category is broad. Yeah. And I don't think it's confusing. We're perceived to be the leader. We're sort of the originator. I would call Paul the father of <laughs> of the modern time series platform. Back in, the, back in the day, time series was largely relegated to scientific computing mm -hmm. or financial computing, tick data, things like that. Now it's got this broad application largely because of the IoT world. So the role that InfluxDB plays is if you think about all of these centers out there in the world, writing data or collecting data, millisecond, second, 10 second, 20 second increments, all of a sudden, you have 100,000 sensors writing every second, every millisecond. All of a sudden, you've got a huge amount of data. Yeah. And so what Influx, I think, did really well and does really well um, is a couple of things that are really, really important. One is we write data really fast, so it's available almost immediately. And we can collect billions of points a second, depending on your infrastructure and how you store it and that sort of stuff. And so being able to collect that data. Two is to be able to read that data as soon as it's available. So to be able to query it at a high speed, to be able to come up with queries that can not only do indication systems, but control systems. Three is with this kind of data, with these time sampled measurements, because there's so much data and because the write's so fast and the queries are so, what you find yourself wanting to do a lot is to downsample that data, basically to summarize it, because you don't need to keep millisecond or even yeah. nanosecond precision data around for a really long time. You want summary. So when you summarize stuff, not only do you have to be good at consolidating it, but you have to be good at evicting data. Most data platforms, their job is to keep the data, Correct. not to, it takes most, if you try to evict data at the rate that you're taking it in, most databases fall over. But a good time series database, particularly Influx, is really good at that. And that becomes the, the foundation for collecting this kind of data and working with it. Now, the closer you get to building control systems, right? Not just indication, but like, I need to take an action on that data quickly. I need to do something with that data. I need to issue a command. I need to alert a person. I need to correct uh, a cybernetic loop. 
that's where that the, the query reach speed pace of this particular kind of data is really important. So, and that so to me, that's the awesome thing about InfluxDB. That's the the fact that we have that real time capability to ingest query and deal with all that time series data. We really provide a lot of the foundations for so many different types of time series applications out there. Um, and I know you do a lot of touring for our customers and getting to meet them. Yeah. Is there any, yeah, <laughs> all around the world. Is there any sort of particular use cases in sort of time series that's really resonated with you from one of our customers? You thought, wow, that's the reason why I do this. This is, this is a really cool use case. Oh, for sure. Oh, uh, there are a bunch of them, but um, yeah. I can share a couple. Um, so, so as a little bit of background, my degree is not in computer science and environmental science. So I tend to really love these sustainability stories that, that go on. Um, so we've spent a bunch of time with Tesla on their power walls and trading energy coming off of their power walls. I'm wow. super excited about that. I'm a power wall owner, so I'm also excited about <laughs> that. Um, we have a similar in Europe with, with um, basically the Tesla of Europe for power walls, Senec, in which they do that battery offload. There are customers doing wind, wind turbine measurements and things like that. There are a bunch of customers doing grid offload and energy storage. There's a lot of really interesting stuff around energy and batteries and sustainability that are really exciting. So I love going to visit those customers, hearing what they're building. Lots of them are old line customers, industrial, but a lot of them are new sustainability oriented customers. I love that. So it's really impacting the world for good through data and enabling people to sort of like transform yeah. that world. Yeah. And the non-sustainability stuff that I really also enjoy is the <laughs> stuff around satellites. Incre Just, yeah. you know, as we look up to the stars, but to see what um, what OneWeb, UTELSAT are doing, we're doing with our technology and, um, you know, basically getting satellites in position that, are, that I think it's 600 plus satellites around glow, indicating their position all the time, going into their socks, seeing what they're doing. Just, it's just fascinating. It really is. Like, I think that's the, the incredible part about our technology. It's really sort of forward thinking and, you know, with no puns there, you know, looking in time forward, it's, it's incredible forecast in the future. Yeah. yeah. Really cool. Well, thank you so much, Evan, for your time. And thank you all for joining us. This has been Influx Data. We would love to see what you do with InfluxDB.